rare coins, pawns, gold and silver bullion. Check out Port City Coin in Portsmouth, New Hampshire for your precious metal needs. A plus rated with the Better Business Bureau. Happy to do a cash transaction. Why buy your metals from one of those slave state mints when you can support the free state economy? Visit PortCityCoin.com, or our, as I like to call it, PortCityCoin.com. The former army guy and author Ralph Peters is a raving authoritarian bad guy who wanted to see either Julian Assange or Edward Snowden assassinated. I can't remember which. But he's also a brilliant author. They used to say he would uh, be, he was capable of out Clancy Clancy back in the 90s. In 1990, he wrote a book called The War in 2020, and it hypothesized a fascistic Japan which had a weapon called the Scrambler. Uh, the Scrambler make, made the uh, hydrogen bomb look like no big deal. In fact, a uh, 95% chance you would you would beg to have a hydrogen bomb dropped on you if you'd been affected by a Scrambler. Except, you wouldn't be able to beg because a Scrambler took away everything you had except your intelligence and your consciousness, your, your, your life. It would start by inflicting, if you were the first person ever affected by a scrambler, it would inflict a pain on you that was greater than any living thing had ever experienced in the history of the earth. And after that, you wouldn't be a vegetable. You would be your normal self, except you couldn't do anything. You couldn't even aim your eyes. You couldn't even decide that you wanted to die and ask someone to kill you. In Peter's book, unlike in real life, the feds were relatively good guys, and they they actually discovered the weapon and refused to use it. It was sort of a weapon of mass destruction because it wouldn't it wasn't something you would just aim. It was something that would affect a wide area, so it was like a nuclear weapon in that respect. That one respect. Anyway, the point being, there are all kinds of things that we could accomplish, Liberty folks in New Hampshire, by casting away ethics but we shouldn't accomplish them. Or at least, I don't want to really ever ask anyone to use those methods to accomplish them. And one of those methods is legislation. So, so compared to the scrambler, the le legislation is pretty benign. But I uh, you know, had two pieces of legislation submitted in 2005, I think, or maybe 2006. Not by being a state rep, but just by requesting that they be submitted. It's very easy to do. It was very easy to do then. All you know, and it doesn't really cost anything except it costs the taxpayers something. So there comes up this sort of ethical question: Is it right to make taxpayers spend two thousand uh, dollars, the estimated amount, on on a hearing and usually rejecting a pro liberty bill? Is that a pro-liberty thing to do? So after submitting those two bills and watching them heard and hearing Chaz Pearl's uh, criticisms, and I think he was I think he was criticizing me if I recall, even though we are friends. He's just a, he's a he's a, a liberal who, who, who you know, he's not he's not a liberty activist or anything like that. He's just a liberal uh, uh, New Hampshire political activist. I listened to his criticism, and I decided that he was right. He was complaining essentially, hey, you know, folks are frigging, they're, you know, putting these bills forward. They don't have any chance of passage. It's costing us money. That's not a libertarian thing to do. Ultimately, I decided that he was in the right, and I did what he suggested. Stop. I stopped submitting or requesting bills. I guess I can't submit them anyway, since I'm not a rep. The argument can be made that you're not really at fault, you know, if you submit a bill or have a bill submitted. Because it's not your fault that people are paying taxes, right? But even I pay some taxes, uh, and it's just, you know I don't. It's it's almost impossible, to, at least impractical, to get completely out of paying state taxes. So I just sort of did the safe thing that was uh, both ethical and less work, and stopped doing it. Stopped requesting bills. I will still uh, take action to 
try and see a bill through once it's submitted. Not much action, but you know, occasionally I'll talk, talk, call talk radio and have them discuss it. But ultimately, it felt dirty. Uh, I didn't want to do it again. I felt like I was using the scrambler. Now, I don't think I should judge, and I don't judge, people who go ahead and submit bills. And there's def- there are definitely some bills that I look at and I think, wow, I, I secretly hope that bill does get submitted. I guess that would be before it's actually a bill. There are a couple of things that could be done by submitting a bill which would have an electrical effect. Just as submitting certain types of bills would have an effect that is electrical. But having kind of started down this particular high road, I, I'm really reluctant to, uh, to drive off of it. What do you think about this sort of thing? Post it in the comments section. The censorship-free censorship, uh, 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 comment section. This edition of the Riddler Report is brought to you by... PortCityCoin.com